Hi, I'm Dr. Romano. I'd like to go over with you a very important concept today on liver detoxification. Now, cytochrome P450 is actually a family of proteins. Um, I'm going to just use the word cytochrome P450 in singular, but just keep in mind it's like a big family of proteins. They contain the heme group. Now, what's going to happen in these processes is what's called a hydroxylation reaction. If you remember, the hydroxylation reaction adds an OH group, like we did in organic. Now, essentially, sometimes we call these monooxygenases, and mono means one, so it just means that we are going to insert an oxygen. Now, what's going to be really weird about it is we're going to start with a CH bond. If you remember in organic chemistry, what has a CH bond? Like an alkene right? Those kind of things, and they are very inert. So this is some very weird thing going on where we're going to replace a CH bond with a COH bond. Now, these cytochrome P450 family of proteins are found on the smooth endo in the smooth ER of many tissues, but mainly in the liver and the small intestine. That would be a really good question. So liver and small intestine is where we contain these. Now, What's the bottom line here? Many powerful carcinogens would, are rendered harmless by this P450 system. So this is like your best friend. So what's going to happen if we have a drug, for instance, and the P450 system metabolizes this drug very slowly, then what does that mean? It's going to stay very active. So if a drug stays active, that means that there's slow rate of metabolism. Now, let's go over a few things. We said that it undergoes hydroxylation reactions to hydrocarbons, to steroids. Now, that might seem crazy, but the bottom line is if you have a steroid and you want to make a steroid, say, we all know they're, they're from cholesterol. If you can imagine you got this big cholesterol molecule and you replace one of the CH bonds with a COH bond, and then that'll trigger like a whole cascade or a pathway on to making steroids. So making steroids, drugs are also um, rendered harmless, such as, say, ibuprofen, caffeine. Those kind of drugs will also undergo hydroxylation reactions. Um, environmental carcinogens. I gave you a good example. Say you have a compound that has an aromatic ring. What happens is we could cause an epoxidation and then it continues on and, as you can see, made into a phenol. Now, you might say, well, what does this mean? So what? Uh, you've made it into a phenol. This often increases the solubility. You've caused something to be, that was relatively nonpolar to become polar. And if we increase the solubility of things, that can cause detoxification and then excretion of drugs. That's the most important thing I want you to get out of the lecture. So the whole point of this cytochrome P450 family is the point of hydroxylation is to render things soluble. And if they're soluble, they can undergo excretion. That's the thing that I want you to really get out of it for the data, the O to the MCAT. Now, we would also see environmental carcinogens hydroxylated. Even foreign substances, which we call xenobiotics, undergo hydroxylation. And also bile and vitamin D synthesis as well is going to undergo hydroxylation reactions. Now, if you're sitting here wondering how can this even be possible that we can insert an O, let me just give you some idea. If you got nothing to do, ask your biology teacher how it happens and let me know how it turns out. Um, if we go into the heme active site, and we look at an amino acid, the star player is cysteine. We all know that cysteine has an S. And what's going to happen is it's going to be attached to an ion. Now, oxygen, as you can see from this reaction, now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to worry about the state, the oxidation state, plus two, plus three, et cetera, of ion. If this was advanced organic chemistry, we would get into the oxidation state. But the bottom line is, to cut through all the bullshit, let me show you how it really happens without killing you on oxidation states. The oxygen molecule goes on to the iron. Now, as you can see, this is a radical, and we have to pick up another electron. And those electrons will be supplied by either NADH or 
NADPH. And as you can see, you would then protonate it. And then normal chemistry, as you know, you would protonate the OH group, it becomes water, this bond comes on, and now we get the star of the show. This species right here has, has Fe in the plus five state, which is crazy, highly oxidative. And that's gonna be the star of the show when you have an iron with a double bond. And that brings me to here. So as you can see, we put on the oxygen, we made one of the oxygens leave, and now here's the magical step. What's gonna happen is this bond is gonna break homolytically, right? We all remember homolytic cleavage in organic chemistry, and there it is, the CH bond getting broken. Now, you might say, well, why so easy? Um, for the simple reason is it involves radicals, and you can almost envision that you're gonna get a radical here, right? You're gonna get a benzylic radical, so it forms very easily, and once we do that, we then come up with the OH group here, right? You've, you've got an OH group, this moved out, and now you got your radical, and now, as you can see, you got your opportunity, another homolytic cleavage, bond breaks, and boom, it's now hydroxylated. And then we're back to where we were in the active site. So as you can see, it's definitely no joke. The chemistry is pretty hard, but the bottom line to cut through all this mumbo jumbo is we've replaced a CH group, right? That was here. We knocked out an H and we made it into an OH. And once we get this, then this is more polar, it's more soluble, and possibly it could be excreted by the body. Um, you, you might ask, if, is it possible if we can replace CH bonds with COH bonds to make different types of energy and stuff like that? The answer is it is. So this is an active area of research where we're actually trying to replace CH bonds and make COHs out of it, and we can maybe use that as a fuel but it's not done with these kind of enzyme systems. Normally we would use, use special catalysts. All right, I hope this helps on a topic that's not, not in the Campbell book, so you probably maybe never come across it, but it's extremely important. Um, and as you can see, the P450 system um, is a major player in these hydroxylation reactions. All right, I'll see you in study group, and maybe we'll have a question on this in a day or so. Bye-bye.